heartbreak for Broadway fans. More than two dozen shows, including Hamilton, are now canceled. Broadway has extended its shutdown due to the pandemic with no productions through next May. No shows means no work and a strain on the livelihoods of this creative community. Putting nearly 97,000 people out of work with no end in sight until June of 2021 at the earliest. Could cost the industry more than $100 million. Her heart breaks for everyone who works on Broadway and for all of those whose livelihoods depend on it. Hi. Hello. Welcome back to what One Hen, Two <laughs> Ducks. On, uh, for today's episode, it is actually a two-parter, and it is the first in our new series called Art Unmasked. And Art Unmasked is all about creatives all around the United States and the globe and how they have used this time to be creative or not creative and how they've gotten through it, um, both in very professional levels and in uh, very community-based levels. Uh, so we are talking to a couple people. And on today's episode, Selena, who are we talking to? So first, we have Lauren Jamelli, who is best known for her international and national tour of Chicago. Um, she is a an amazing soul. She <laughs> has such a wonderful outlook and such an amazing personality. You're really going to be excited, especially if you are a actress in this community or even in the community at large who's, in, who's you know, just trying to navigate as an actress. She has a very good and poignant um, advice and um, and encouragement for you today. Yeah, she's an actress who lives in the city in, of Manhattan, so she's seen a lot of change over the last year. Uh, and she's still, you know, she's still working at the ground level to try to get her big break. And uh, uh, we hope you enjoy her interview. Granted one more start. The Congress of the Sacred Heart. When she gets here. 1920. How old were you? Don't remember. When what happened? I met Hi. Yay. I met Miss Lauren Jamelli when we did a show a couple years ago in upstate New York at the Depot Theater. Uh, she has also a very awesome uh, career in the arts and in theater. And we are very excited to have her and kind of learn a little bit more about her experience as an actor, especially someone who lives directly in Manhattan. Um, excited to get her thoughts on a couple of things. So hi, Lauren, welcome. Hi, Megan. Yes. Thanks for having me, guys, <laughs> ladies. Yes, thank you so much. <laughs> so happy to be here with you. So Lauren, go ahead and give us a little cliff notes of uh, your career, where you're from, what brought you to New York, up until about January 2020. All that stuff, you got it. Okay, so I'm originally from the Boston area, just outside. I grew up in a small town called Norwell. Um, I trained with the Boston Ballet in their pre-professional program. Um, somewhere around high school, figured out that theater was a thing and musical theater was a thing. So I wanted to do that instead of, you know, just being a ballerina because um, I wanted to be able to dance and sing too. So I decided to go to school uh, for straight theater. Um, I attended Manhattanville College in Westchester County and majored in dance and theater with a concentration in acting and directing. Graduated in 2003 and no, that's a lie. That's when I graduated high school. I graduated college in 2007 and I moved <laughs> right into the city. I like do not do not pass go, do not collect $200, like signed a lease, started May 1st. I graduated like May 4th or 5th and moved right into my apartment and then started pursuing a performing career full time. And I'm very thankful to say it's been full time basically ever since. It's awesome. Um, trying to think some career highlights, which is always fun to look back. Um, I did a few national tours. I was on the national tour of the Drowsy Chaperone for two years. 
Um, I have done a ton of regional productions. I did four years with the National Tour of Chicago. Um, and that was also an international company. So we would play Asia and Canada and oh, all over the awesome. US. Mm -hmm. um, I got to work with Hal Prince on his final production of Candide for New York City Opera. Um, I've done a lot of work performing for Broadway Cares Equity Fights AIDS. I'm also a choreographer and a teaching artist. So it's what I do. This is what I love to do. Um, yeah. Yes. Is that, awesome. is that enough of a career? That is a beautiful. I mean, other than the fact that you missed your uh, your amazing stint at the Depot Theater well, with yes, me of doing a, <laughs> and the world goes that round. In all my great, work. great uh, <laughs> career highlight. Real. Well, and of course, it was a highlight meeting you and you know, getting to work with Benny and Adam and getting to meet Mike. You know. What you got to do? Were you working on anything like in the new year when, when 2020 started? Were you, did you have some things lined up? Oh yeah. Um, so when 2020 started, I was first, I was recovering from a knee injury from the last contract I was on. I had a contract that was in the fall of 2019 and I sprained my knee twice in the span of 10 days. So Oof. before, yeah, before opening night too, it was all during mm. rehearsals. So I had to leave that contract early. So by the time, like my 2020 kind of started at the end of 2019, because <laughs> right. injuries are not fun. Um, but I guess in some ways it, it prepared me for 2020 at the same time. Uh, so started off with a knee injury. So I was recovering from a knee injury. In January, I had a choreography contract that I was completing for Manhattanville College, my alma mater. They invited me back to choreograph their production of company for their musical theater majors. So I did that. Um, I had uh, an upcoming contract over the summer that I had booked, and I was supposed to perform in a benefit for Broadway Cares Equity Fights AIDS in March. Um, so those were all like the career things that were going on uh, at the beginning of 2020. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Nice. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so so then 2020 happened. Yeah. Yes. yes. Yeah. And the. Uh, happened. The uh, shutdown of of everything. How did you how did you feel in those first couple like weeks of the shutdown? Um, first couple weeks were actually a bit of a relief. I hate to say that because you know the life of a New York City performer and someone who's working in the arts and and you know we've got our <laughs> got our finger in a lot of things at once, right? We have a yes. survival job sometimes. We have. Uh, being in rehearsals for another project, we're going to the gym, we are trying to maintain a social life, we are preparing for auditions, we're doing self-tapes, we're helping friends with pre-production for their projects. It's just all over the place. So when things initially shut down, I mean, I was hustling seven days a week, just wow. in wow. burnout mode, wow. essentially. Yeah, yeah. You know, in burnout <laughs> mode. And still like going to PT, trying to recover my knee, all these things. So I was a bit like, oh, this is nice. <laughs> it's nice to have a break. I know that's weird, right? Like the world is <laughs> ending not. and I'm like. <laughs> yeah. But it, it for the first few days, it was like, oh, I have nothing to do. I have nothing on the calendar. What is this? What is this going to be like? Um, and it was scary to a certain extent, but I didn't, I had, none of us had any idea that it was gonna last this long or it was going to be this intense right, right, or right. this mismanaged also, just to be honest. Mm -hmm. um, you know, like I, yes, I think yes. when it initially shut down, I was like, oh, this might be a month or two. This might be a month or two. Things will get pushed off. You know, I'll be able to do my contract over the summer, whatever. But for now, all we need to do is just stay home and be home, be, be with mm -hmm. ourselves you know, connect with friends and family from a distance, check in on everyone, pay attention to the news, pay attention to the things we were supposed to be doing. I also right, was right. sick with COVID. Uh, I didn't realize the day everything shut down, the day after was like my first day of symptoms. Right. So there was that too of like, oh, this thing's going on. The world is shut down and now I'm sick. And then I find out I have it. It's like, okay, mm. so awesome. Cool, 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 cool. Right. Yeah. So, I mean, at first there was relief and then there was also a, a little bit of panic, but my motto quickly became one day at a time. 
Like just take mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. one day at a time. What can I control today? I paid it you know, for those first three weeks when I was sick, I was paying attention to my symptoms. Of course, I was in touch with my doctor. I was trying to find out what to do to help me feel better. All, all those things. Cause, um, I had symptoms and I had a really terrible headache and I was run down and you know, some of the, some of the symptoms you hear about I lost my sense of taste and smell, whatever, but I was still able to like do things during the day. So I just tried to to do something every day to feel productive. Mm -hmm. Um, Yeah. But then it went on and it went on and it went on and it went on. (laughs) And it's still going on. And it's it's like, yeah, and it's still going on. Right. And, and the thought was, okay, so I've, I've checked things off the to-do list. I've done projects that I've been putting off. I, I, and just slowly but surely the to-do list fell away because you catch up on everything, right? And now it's like you're left with this big blank canvas in a lot of ways. So that was it for me. I didn't spiral, thank, thank goodness. I didn't really have an anxiety spiral. I didn't freak out. I didn't feel like the world was ending. I think I just got into this mantra of like one day at a time. And Mm -hmm. I was, I was really surprised by that because I've suffered from anxiety, depression, panic attacks for as long as I can remember. So like this pandemic can really, and it has for some people really kind of sparked those feelings again, right? Because so much of the world is out of control. So Mm -hmm. much of Mm -hmm. our careers, especially in the arts, right? With the industry shut down, it's out of our control. When this comes back, there's literally nothing we can do to make it happen faster because it's out of our hands. So like, I I think it tested the foundation of the work I've been doing over the last seven, eight years to like really try and manage my anxiety and depression and panic attacks. And, you know, I was thankful that I feel like I didn't spiral, but I was certainly sympathetic and empathetic and uh, in conversation with people that this sparked that for them they they regressed they took steps backwards they felt out of control so Mm -hmm. yeah so like i'm thankful i didn't i didn't have those feelings because i also live by myself i live by myself in new york city in a small studio apartment with a dog yeah (laughs) so it could have it could have been very isolating and very scary but i just tried to keep practicing the things i knew that worked for me you know, reaching out to friends and family, having a to-do list every single day, even if it's little things. Like, I, right, I want to clean right. the bathroom today. I want to send two emails. I want to um, make sure I text my friend on their birthday. Just little things to feel like I was doing something to take steps forward. Because That's we're very important. all in this just holding pattern. Of, we don't know right. what's happening. We don't find the things you can control and do them. Yes. Right. Yes. So that was kind of kind of a practice in that and I don't want to call it like a daily meditation because that's not what it what it was but it was definitely a daily practice of okay what are we going to do today right Right. so I don't know did that did that cover everything I don't think yes (laughs) no no yes it did (laughs) do you I mean you live in the city you live in Manhattan Mm -hmm. so not and right and not only did you say like you live by yourself other than your beautiful puppy but um you're seeing the city change around you every day and you are seeing um, not only feeling isolated because you're by yourself in your apartment and you can't really go anywhere, but then you're also seeing friends of yours move away, move away from the city. So you're seeing this very big change happening as and, and feeling probably no control over any of it. I mean, none of us had any control, but um, do you feel like, how did you, how do you feel like the city around you at least your neighborhood and whatnot was, was changing. Like, do you, well, I mean, just from a a business standpoint in the blocks around my apartment. So, uh, let me start, let me start here. Sorry. My survival job is in events and restaurants. Those are the two things I do. So talk about like an industry shutdown from an art standpoint. I also happen to work for an industry that doubly shut down, right? Yeah. So your, your job, your passion job and your survival job are both Yeah, had both shut down. So looking at my own restaurant, which is in my neighborhood, and then looking at the restaurants around me, looking at the stores around me, I mean, it, it just became 
walking around my neighborhood seeing, oh, another one's moved out. Another one's shut yeah. down. Another one's reopened. Another one's shut down. Like, to reopen and then shut down again. It's It has been such a struggle to watch the city that I love and the city that I dreamed of moving to since I was a teenager just kind of hibernate. I don't want to say New York's dead because New York's not dead. It's not a wasteland. Mm -hmm. There's still life there, but it has changed and it's kind of gone into this hibernation. It's not yeah. thriving the way we know New York to be thriving. It's not, it's not the city of opportunity anymore. A lot of the opportunity has moved elsewhere or moved online to be frank. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. It's not a, you know, some of the magic of what New York is, is that you can go to, a party at one place and run into someone you would never run into. And then you're going to go uptown and go to this different place and go to central park. And it, there's that kind of life it doesn't exist right now. So it's, right. it's hard to watch. It's really hard to watch. Um, it's changed. I think New York will come back. I think it has to come back. I mean, yeah. the Renaissance yeah. came after the plague. There's no, you know, <laughs> there's no, in times of great like despair, there's always like a, the pendulum has to swing back the other way. Is what I'm trying right. to say. You know? Do you feel like um, do you kind of see a light at the end of the tunnel right now, or does it still be like it's a little too soon to call it? I think the vaccine is our light. I think that's like the hope that we've needed. Mm -hmm. I think the pivot some people have made to creating work online or creating work in other ways or finding other outlets for art. Um, I think that's a light at the end of the tunnel. Um, it's just, I, I think the, the daily practice right now is patience. Right. I think it's just continuing to practice the patience that we've been practicing for the last, what, eight, nine, 10 months now, 10 months. That's scary. I didn't even think of that until this very moment. <laughs> We've been practicing patience every day for 10 months. Like if we can just hold right, on a little right. longer, hold on a little longer, it is going to start turning. And I really think it's going to come back. I mean, what did Fauci say? Like in the, over the summer, the beginning of the fall for Broadway, it's like, we've done 10 months. What's another five, you know, mm -hmm. kind of. Mm -hmm. um, I think, I think people will be really eager to go back to the things that we know and love and that made us happy and that were taken away too. I think that pendulum swing is going to happen. So like that's kind of the light at the end of the tunnel is that it will be back and it will be back bigger, better, stronger, and more excited than ever. I really think people are going to be just embracing the things that they love and loved to do beforehand with this new appreciation for it. Yes. 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 Right. And in that way, it's like, uh, just hold on for that. Just hold on for that because it is going to be so worth it. The, the life that we're going to leave, lead or have after all of this is going to be so much richer than the life we had yeah. before. I really think so. Yeah. Um, and do, that, do you feel like your mindset about, about the business, business has changed from pre-pandemic now to now? Personally, there's been so much time for reflection, right? That blank canvas I kind of talked mm -hmm. about. There's been so much time for reflection that I think in, I'm going to speak about the business separate, but I just want to talk about like my own, how I'm going to approach the business has shifted in a huge way. Like I, I used to care so much before about what other people thought, what casting directors thought, where I fit, how I could how I could make myself fit into what they wanted, trying to be a guesser about, you know, what they wanted to see from me or what they needed from me and trying to give them that thing. I don't give two shits about that anymore. It's, it's, <laughs> it's like, I have figured out what I love about this business, what I love to do in this business, what inspires me in this business and what my voice is more yes. in these last months, not practicing not practicing what we do. I mean, for the first like eight months of the pandemic, I didn't want to dance a step. I didn't want to <laughs> sing a song. I didn't want to do a monologue. I didn't want to work on coaching or I, I just didn't. I wanted to mourn what we lost and also watch other people's art. I wanted to do mm. that. I didn't want to produce art. I wanted to consume art. So that mm -hmm. was my first eight months. But like since then, I'm like, if I'm going to do this thing, 
because this business is hard. What we do is hard. I'm going to do it and I'm going to do it in a way that makes me happy. So like, yes, yes, yes. Right. (laughs) (laughs) So, So like less compare and despair. That's a huge thing that I fall into is like, oh, I'm not thin enough or I'm not, my leg doesn't get as high or I'm not fit enough or I'm not, uh, I'm not enough. Just this idea of not being enough. It's like, no, let that go. It's like the imposter sing- syndrome thing, which I feel all the time. The thing that's like, you finally get a job and it's an amazing job and it's an amazing opportunity to perform. And somehow you think they're going to find out that you're an imposter, that you're not as good as they thought they were, that you're going to get mm. fired. All those things. I lived with that every day um, on certain shows. Like I was like, oh, they're going to figure out that I'm a fraud and they're going to come and fire me. Nope, gone, gone. <laughs> what I have is valuable. What I bring to the table yes. is valuable. I, I don't want to apologize anymore for taking up space. I don't want to apologize anymore for being too loud. I don't want to apologize anymore for having an opinion that might be different than Preach. what I'm working with. <laughs> Like, I I just, I, that's where the last eight months of not producing has brought me. It's like, if I'm going to do this, I'm going to do it on my own terms. Right? Yes. And then in the greater idea of the business, I hope that what we come back to is going to be a kinder business. I hope it's going to be a more inclusive business. Mm. I hope it's going to be a business where we've, taken the time to examine what doesn't work and that we take the steps to fix it. I hope we look back at the things that were working and see how we can make them better. See how it can be a more, what's the word I want to use? Um, like humanity, bring the humanity back into yes. our business. Cause Agreed. so much, I mean, God, we do it five, six times a day. You go into a room, you do your art and it's like, it's just, you hear no over and over and over again. Right. And I think there needs to be a, a, a re-acknowledgement that we're people, casting directors are people. It's, there is a power structure, but that we can all just be people telling stories in the dark. <laughs> right. And that's yeah. the, the goal yeah. is the common goal, right? We want to create art. Mm-hmm. We want to create the best art that we can create. So right. just because someone's not right for a project doesn't mean that they're worthless or unworthy or any of those things. It's like just looking back at we all have the same goal. We all love mm-hmm. this. We all love what we do. Let's go back to that when right. we come back to it. Because how lucky are we that we get to come back to it now? So let's yeah. make it that much better for everyone. I hope that kind of made sense, but like that's, no, that's totally. what I imagine. That's what I hope. Selena and I, on an earlier episode, we had, we had discussed about um, kind of where we would want auditions and, and that kind of process to be run in the future. And we talked about how kind of a less focus on these kind of cattle calls of like looking at people as just products and it's just product, 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 product. And and more so of like the human and the artist and even inner, even um, inter-artist acknowledgement, like in the holding room. Yes. Sometimes that room is terrible, you know? Like sometimes that room is awful and it's full of negative energy because everyone's judging everybody. And we don't mean to, but it happens. And so it's it's kind of like a, an acknowledgement of the fact that we're all here, um, you know, as artists and not yeah. as <laughs> products. <laughs> You know, just like any period of pause, right? We can look, we can look back at the risks that were taken previously and be like, oh, that was revolutionary. Why was that revolutionary? Right? Because we have the space and the time. We don't have 18 things on the docket that we right. have to be working on that are taking our attention, right? We can look back and reflect. And this period of reflection, I think, is so important if we use it wisely. If we yes. actually use it wisely to take a look and be like, okay. That was it. just looking at casting. Like, and I'm not a casting director. I am a choreographer and director and sometimes, but mostly what I am is a performer. So I can't speak from a place of being an expert in casting. But when I go to consume art, when I go to a Broadway show and I see someone who is an unexpected choice for the role, but reveals something so much deeper and better about that character, than 
a different choice would have been, it's like right. absolutely they were the right choice. Especially when you're talking about like revivals and stuff like that or, or new castings of, of the same show where you see that in a completely different light for mm-hmm. sure. Yes. I saw someone write something the other day about how not only do we have to have like this training in dance, this training in theater, this training in like a book, like vocal instruction. Not only do we have to uh, keep up to date with our headshots and our resumes and figure out exactly, you know, the size and shape and everything that they want. Um, Not only do we have to then learn everything there is to know about self tapes and learn how to use iMovie and Pro and get a ring light and learn how to mix audio tracks and like basically learn every single aspect of it just to be an actor and to get cast and not only have like a social media following with 12k followers like there's a whole find ways to create content for social media find ways to create content when you isn't going to break the bank like i could go book a photo shoot every single day for the next two weeks i'm gonna be broke (laughs) yes those Yes, those actors that like every every two weeks they're on social media and they're like in a different place with a different like professional photographer. I'm like, how can you afford this? <laughs> but like, would know. you would you agree that like not only do you have to be this like incredible actor, but now you have to learn all these kind of different things in order just to get yourself seen or make yourself more marketable? Like, can't we? Can't isn't there just be a website a, editor? Learn how to build yeah. a website and be a website. Well, learn how to build websites. Like. All those things. I'm trying to think what else. Um, what else too? It's like you have to, you have to be in shape. You have to be not only like be in shape to be able to do your craft, but also be like an athletic Olympic body sometimes. To at least to right. be a dancer in New York, you also have to be yeah. aesthetically pleasing. Do you think right, some right. of that is? Do you think that's pressure we get from casting? I think about this all the time, and I know what my answer is, but I'm going to ask you to. Do you think that's pressure from casting or do you think that's pressure from your comp- mm. other women auditioning? That's a very, that's a good, very good, question. good question. I think it's a little bit of both. I think it depends on the casting director because some are really old fashioned. Some really are wanting the, the the professional pristine look like as if it was a job interview um, while some others are not. I think it also, I think you could tell somewhat by age. Like if you go in there and it's like an older generation person, then you might be like okay this is a professional pro- but if it's like our younger generation that's coming up man this our millennial we we are doing stuff we are like xers and and millennials are starting to like push the <laughs> boomers aside like all right you did a good job goodbye now and um with our new aesthetic i think like we were saying i think we are going back to the, the normal person i think we are going back to just the raw human and less the as- aspiration because i think our generation just does it in general you know, yeah. we are people who are a lot more down to earth than and they just are. just individuality. We, yes, we're all about individuality. We're all about being ourselves to the max and, and being proud of that, whether it fits or not, but being proud of that. And so I think as we, as the older generation starts to roll out and this new generation rolls in, I think the whole look of auditions are going to change too. I, I hope so. And I think, I think too, in the age of social media, there's been like this weird shift, right? Cause there's been uh, more inclusivity. And I just, I don't just mean ethnically and mm-hmm. correcting how disparaged that has been in the past. I just mean inclusivity of people who look all sorts of different ways. Yes. yes. Who love all sorts of different things. Like there is no cookie cutter anymore mm-hmm. of what a person should or shouldn't look like. Or yes, yes. There's body inclusivity. There's, there's yes. Yes. just all of it, right? It's Bridgerton there's everywhere. <laughs> and at the same time, jazz hands. <laughs> and there's this, <laughs> just, just. <laughs> there's also this because we live in a social media world, and where the idea is, especially as actors and people who are trying to be micro influencers to some extent on social media, you always have to be camera ready you always have to be producing content that is produced. Right. Right. Right? Yeah. So not yeah. you just out of bed. Although some people look gorgeous just out of bed and they can post those photos. I am right. the person. Right? Yeah. So yeah. It's, it's like you want this and you want the, it's, it's again, like the two things coexisting at the same time. Yeah. Right. Well, like, I was just going to say like, because you have the, like, it's hard. It, I think it's, I think Selena was right. I think it's like a balance because 
if you're if you're a casting uh, agent and you are pre-screening people, you want to put forward mm -hmm. to your client the best that you have seen, and sometimes that even just means visually. You know what I mean? Like you, like they might sing well enough, but they look good, and I'm gonna put them forward. You know what I mean? Whereas I may not put forward the person who is like insane that looks literally like they're rolled out of bed. You know what I mean? And, and hasn't taken yeah. care of themselves or, you know what I mean? Like I want to look good too. So I'm going to, it's still a business and they want to, they want that return client as well. But I think, and I think that it is growing and it's now changing. And like, I think casting has more flexibility with kind of saying like, listen, this next person is coming in, but you just need to hear them. You know what right. I mean? Like they're, they're, Exactly. Yeah, like they're going to, they're going to be a different choice for you, but just keep your mind yeah. open. And I think that's what that's happening a little bit more, but I do agree with the fact that sometimes it is other people in the room. Cause I know I've been guilty of that where I've bought the same clothes somebody else has because I want to fit in. Yeah. So I do think there's a little bit of a herd mentality there too. Jeez. Lauren, do you have any <laughs> final thoughts and any advice you would give to some, uh, artists out there who might still be feeling very stuck listen everyone's jazz hands jazz hands i did do chicago for four years so this is like autopilot it's just yeah um <laughs> this is like default setting <laughs> anyway to answer your question uh yeah i think i think what's important to like lead with is everyone's reaction to what's happened over the last year is valid Everyone's reaction is valid, natural. There is, it's really hard to look around at your peers, right? And see how different people have reacted to this. Some people have pivoted and created six figure businesses. They've LLC, they've started podcasts like you two have. They've gone back to grad school. I have a friend who's going to Harvard. It's like, it's just, it's hard to look around and see, oh, but they're thriving, they're thriving, they're thriving, they're thriving. Why am I not thriving? If you are a person who still feels stuck, depressed, sad, your process of the last 10 months and whatever the next 10 months or year or two years, it's gonna be what it's gonna be. So it's natural, it's okay, be where you are. Just be where you are and don't pay any attention to anyone else, right? So that's like number one piece is whatever you're feeling is totally valid. I can speak to what works for me to, help, to kind of like help me feel productive and connected and grounded and feel like I'm moving forward. But like just because it works for me doesn't mean it's going to work for you. Or this might be a great thing that you didn't know that you wanted or needed or any of that. So if, if it's helpful, I'm happy to share those. Um, but like, you know, for me, it's like find a daily routine, have like a kind of a plan for the day or a to-do list just so I can feel like I'm doing something for myself. I'm taking small steps forward, even if it's just doing my laundry that day. Like that's a that's good a big, step, big forward. step forward. Big step forward. Laundry is <laughs> always really tough. I have to move every day. I have to work out or do a yoga flow or go for a long walk outside, go for a bike ride. I have to use those natural like antidepressant endorphins to mm -hmm. boost my mood. Um, it can be really easy. I don't want to say easy because that's that sounds almost judgmental. Um, it can be very comfortable to like just sit on the couch and click watch next, watch next, next episode, next episode, next episode. Mm -hmm. But. Mm -hmm. If you can motivate to get off the couch, get outside, even if it's for just 10 minutes, like right, vitamin right. D is really helpful for boosting mood too and getting a little sunshine. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. For me, staying connected with friends and family, like <laughs> I can say, cause Megan's right here, like we <laughs> chat all the time. We have a Marco Polo that's going for months and months and months and months. And even if it's just a little check-in or a text message, just like connect with another human being. Um, I think that's really important. Sometimes your friend might need you more than you need them. For me, the two things that I know I can always control is my level of patience and my level of preparation. I'm gonna say that again, because that's something that I have like written on my mirror in my entryway to my apartment and it helps me in my career. It's like the only things that are in my control 
when I walk into the casting office, when I walk into a job interview, when I walk into a date, any of the, any of that is like my patience and my preparation. Right. Right. Have I done everything I can do to prepare for this? And have I brought my patience cap with me? And can I bring myself to a place where just breathe in, breathe, breathe out one step at a time. It might take five hours. It might take 15 years. Uh, just bring your patience. <laughs> right. Um, <laughs> Therapy works for me. I've been in therapy for eight years. Mm -hmm. Changed mm -hmm. my life. Mm -hmm. If you need help, there is nothing wrong with reaching out for it. It's, again, I, I hate this word because it's really overused, but it's a process. Yeah. And yeah. if you feel like it's something you want to try, there are tons of resources. It's become so easy now to work with a therapist. Set a few long-term goals. You have your like daily goals, but then what the pandemic really allowed the space for me to make two really big long-term goals that I'm working on that are big projects. One of them's a book nice. that I really can't talk about yet, but it's mm -hmm. it's hopefully going to be uh, a big tool and resource for current theater artists and future theater artists cool. from people cool. behind the table and in front of the table and who work on shows. Nice. Everyone. Nice. So... And it's like, thank you, pandemic. I had all this space to like be alone with my thoughts. And then mm -hmm. this thing kind of popped into my head. So rest, take take a minute. It's okay to right. say no to stuff. It's okay to not answer that phone call. It's okay to like say, you know what? I can't FaceTime tonight. I need some me time. Mm -hmm. I need mm -hmm. to just, just not be for anyone or anything except myself. Um, I have a dog and that's really helpful too. Yes, Lulu. Uh, and then the last thing on my list, sorry, I made a long list, but um, I put down, give yourself permission to be happy. Because mm. isolation and depression and it's, it's a, it can be a downward spiral, right? It's the snake that is eating its own tail. It just keeps going. Right. So if you can break that by giving yourself permission to be happy, remind yourself what feeds you. There's no wrong answer to that. It could be a certain movie. It could be working on a new skill. It could be getting going to the corner and getting a cup of coffee from your favorite coffee place that probably needs your business and your support right now. Yeah. Um, it could be cooking your favorite meal. It could be talking to a parent. Like Some of the things that I've talk through on this list but it's like give yourself permission to be happy You're this thing right. is really hard right now this whole yeah. environment is a, a setup for um it can be a, a setup for like emotional disaster right and it can feel heavy and it can feel like a huge weight on your back it is okay to find moments of happiness in in all of this craziness that's for sure that's the, uh, I, I mean i think that's my final thoughts <laughs> Thank you so much, Lauren Jamelli, for being on here today. You have been such a light and sure. talked to us about some really important things, and I really appreciate it. Yes, I am so happy to meet you. It's been an honor and a pleasure to meet you. I'm excited to to watch your career continue. Megan, better keep me in the loop, and I'll be watching you personally for you as you continue to move forward in your amazing life. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Thank you both so much for having me. It's been a Thank pleasure. You, Thank you, Lauren. Bye-bye. Bye. All right. An awesome interview with Lauren yeah. Jamelli. We thank you again for your time, Lauren. Yes, for sure, Lauren. <laughs> me and you will never part. Call me. Make sure you stay tuned for tomorrow's episode where we interview Broadway's Bruce Winant on how uh, the Broadway community is affected by the pandemic and what they are doing to recover. Yes, you're not going to want to miss that. Trust me, you're not going to want to miss it. Awesome. Folks, we appreciate your time. And if you could, find us on Patreon at Patreon backslash one hen. You can get uh, different levels of membership with our Patreon which includes backstage stories from some of our Art Unmasked guests. As well as merchandise and all kinds of stuff. Yeah, you can get all kinds of stuff. Listen, listen, people, you get the backstage stories, you can get merch, you, you can get so many amazing things when you support us. Plus, we love you. I mean, we love you anyway. Yeah. 
but we, you'll get insider information on episodes, uh, certain tiers. Hugs. You can get virtual hugs. You get merchandise, one hand merchandise, Ooh, and uh, juicy, juicy stories from our from our guests on some insider information in the business. Ooh, good stories. Good stories. We will see you tomorrow for Broadway's Bruce Wynette's interview. Bye. Yeah.